Hello and welcome to lecture 3 of the course Microelectronics Lab. In this module, we are going to give you an overview of DC pulse characterization equipment um, within which we will cover or we will give you introduction of the source measurement unit for these uh, DC and pulse IV characterizations. Uh, applications of uh, the source measure unit or SMUs for different electrical and material characterization. We will also give you insights into parametric curve tracers or parameter analyzers, uh, its applications into CV and ultra fast pulse IV measurements. Uh, then furthermore, we will also try to cover applications of these parametric curve tracers and integration with SMUs for applications like non-volatile memory testing, trap analysis, reliability characterization. And finally, we will also uh, brief you about uh, the automation of these measurements and automated characterization suits. I'm Abhay Joshi, Application Engineer for Keithley Instrument Tektronix India Private Limited. In this short presentation, I'll be talking about Keithley Source Measure Unit, its all electrical parameter and applications for material and device testing. What is Source Measure Unit or what is SMU? SMU is integrated instrument having feature of high precision voltage source, high precision and accurate current source along with DC multimeter capabilities for measurement of voltage, current and resistance. Along with this, SMU also having DC resistive electronic load for syncing applications. One SMU means a combination of DC electronic load, current source, DMM and power supply. Electrically, SMU system look like this. It is going to have either of voltage source or current source for the measurement. We can have current measurement and voltage measurement parallelly. So when any device is connected, we can either do the measurement or we can do the measurement by sourcing either voltage or current. Considering all this aspect, SMU can be utilized in device testing and material testing application in various configuration. For example, we can use SMU just as high accurate voltmeter in which zero current will be sourced by current source and voltage measurement will be done. We can also use it as an emitter in which voltage source comes by sourcing zero volt we are measuring current. We can also use it as an ohm meter like individual DMM in which the known value of current can be sourced to the device and voltage can be measured either in two wire mode or in four wire mode. We can also do resistance measurement by changing current source with voltage source. For power supply application, we can use SMU as a very precise voltage source where we can apply voltage starting from hundreds of micro volt going up to 200 volts or even 3 kV. When we are talking about power supply, we can also configure SMU as a constant current source in which we can source current starting from femto or pico ampere. On higher side, it can be 1 ampere, 10 ampere or 50 ampere depending on SMU capabilities. We can also use SMU as a power load configuration in which it will be sinking current. There are various applications in device testings like solar cell characterization, fuel cell, battery testing in which sinking capability is also very much useful. And in our regular material characterization, various types of IV measurement in which either voltage or current need to be sourced along with doing the measurement using voltage meter and ammeter. So all this configuration can be done using single source measure unit. When to use voltage sourcing and when to use current sourcing in material characterization. When we talk about the materials, all of materials, we have subclassified them depending on the resistance offered by the materials. We call them resistive material or semiconductor material or dielectric material or insulating materials, conducting material, superconducting material or metals. All this classification is based on the resistance offered by the material. Same thing is true with the devices. 
When we need to characterize all this material, SMU is very, very useful. But we cannot use single configuration to characterize all this class of the material using single configuration. How we measure resistance? We measure resistance using simple Ohm's law. R is equal to V by I. Looking at this simple mathematical equation, we can easily figure out there are two ways with which we can do the resistance measurement. And those are either by sourcing voltage and measuring current or by measuring voltage when we are sourcing current. In our material characterization, most of the times we characterize various types of metal for interconnect in the ICs or contact pads. We talk about functional materials. They may be semiconductor materials. They may be the dielectric material or we talk about high K dielectric materials. When we have to characterize all this material, which is the configuration I should use? Whether I should start with sourcing voltage or whether I should start with sourcing current. Take a simple example of power supply. When we are having a power supply of capability 15 volt and if we connect a device and sourcing 5 volt, there are two scenarios which we really need to understand. First, if the connected device is having resistance which is less than output impedance of the power supply. Take a simple in that case, you imagine connected device is a wire which is connected between positive terminal of power supply and negative terminal of power supply. Now, can we apply 5 volt from this power supply? As an engineer, we may say, no, we cannot apply because we are shorting power supply. In material research, if the materials which are connected to the power supply, if they are offering higher resistance than the output impedance of the power supply, power supply go in instability mode. It may pump more current than required. That can create a damage either to the devices or the complete setup which is coming in picture between the device to the power supply. In those applications, we have to use sourcing current and doing the voltage measurement. By this way, we can characterize those materials and extract various parameters. But if connected device is having very, very high resistance than power supply, in that case, voltage source can be used. We cannot use current source that time because we know that current prefer low resistive path. And if the connected device is going to offer higher resistance than the output impedance of the instrument, then current will not flow through the device. Even though physically device is connected, we will not able to characterize the device. Considering that aspect, we need an instrument which is having capability of voltage sourcing and accurate current sourcing. So we can characterize all the materials starting from metal going up to insulators. Kitli offer various types of SMU depending on their electrical capabilities and applications. Like we can have 2400 SMU, we can have single and dual channel 2636 SMU, we can have high voltage, high current SMUs for uh, special applications like high power device or high power material characterization or we can also have a specialized power of uh, SMUs. Let me quickly take you through a few SMUs available in this lab. What are their electrical capabilities and what are their key features? We have four different types of SMU. One general purpose 2400 SMU which is capable of sourcing voltage up to 200 volt, current up to 1 ampere with 20 watt power rating. And on the lower side, this SMU offer resolution of 1 micro volt for voltage measurement and sourcing. 10 pico ampere for current sourcing and measurement. 2635 single channel or 2636B is a dual channel SMU. This is ultra low current SMU which we can use it for measuring very, very low current. This SMU is capable of sourcing 200 volt on higher side, 1.5 ampere in DC and 10 ampere in pulse mode with 30 watt power restriction. And when we talk about the lower side resolution, 2635 and 36 offer 100 nano volt as a voltage measurement resolution and 100 atto ampere e to the power minus 18 current measurement resolution. This we can use it when we have to measure a very, very low flowing current or leakage current of the material and devices. SMU 2651 is high current SMU. We can use this SMU when we need to source or measure a very, very high current or even sink high current during the testing operation. This SMU is capable of sourcing 40 volt, 20 ampere DC and 50 ampere pulse with 200 watt DC power restriction 
and this SMU also can support 2 kilowatt power in pulse mode. On lower side, this offer 1 micro volt and 1 pico ampere current resolution. Two boxes of this SMU can be integrated together either to double the power from 40 volts to the 80 volts or double the current from 20 ampere DC to 40 ampere DC and 100 ampere pulse in case if the device or material need to be tested at very high power. For high voltage breakdown testing, we do have 2657A in this lab which offer 3 kilo volt voltage capability, 120 milliampere current capability with 100, 180 watt power requirement. This particular SMU offer 1 femtoampere current measurement range which is very useful when we test high breakdown devices for very very low leakage current. Single SMU will be more than enough. All these four types of SMU have four different connectors. SMU2400 comes with standard banana socket which we can see on any of DMM or standard power supplies. 2635 and 36 as we discussed these are the low current SMUs they comes with built in triax connectors. 2651 again it is a banana but high current capability banana socket and 2657 comes with high voltage triax. All these connectors they are different in their electrical properties as well as their mechanical specification. So if somebody is going to use this SMU in any other setup where probe station or chambers are there we need to make sure that the connection between these two to the final device is properly taken care and it is the whatever the cable connector we are using those are not adding any unnecessarily noise or discontinuity during the measurement. Another important aspect of using SMU in operation is we have seen SMU can be configured in various configurations. There are so many products there like power supply, current source, DC electronic load measurement. How SMU operate when we are actually using the SMU in day to day operation? For any single point measurement, first SMU take a job of stabilizing sources. Whatever source we are using first it gets stabilized. If there is any user defined delay or auto delay then SMU wait for that time and then measurement happen. Looking at this cycle you might have understood that measurement happen after source stabilization and delay. In material application if you sometimes as a user if we want to do the faster measurement maybe this cycle can create certain problems. In such cases we can use stand alone dedicated meter where meter will directly start doing the measurement. But cases where you need to apply the voltage or current and then do the measurement then definitely we have to wait for source stabilization so SMU will not create any problem during that operation. Another aspect we have seen in a previous slide where SMU capability is like 200 volt, 1 ampere but 20 watt. How to read? at what voltage we can achieve particular amount of current or at what current we can achieve particular about voltage. For that it is very important to understand the power diagram of all these SMUs. To give a simple example here is a DC power diagram of the SMU capable of 40 volt and 3 ampere. What this mean? There are two different ranges. First range is having 40 volt up to 1 ampere. That means this particular instrument will be useful for experiment where up to 40 volt 1 ampere current is sufficient and this is true whether it is for sourcing purpose or for the measurement purpose. But if we need more current then we have to use this range in which 3 ampere current is supported but the voltage restrictions will be 6 volt. So this range is offering 18 watt, this range is offering 40 watt. In pulse mode SMU can offer higher power. Here you can see this is DC domain in which 200 volt is supported only up to 100 milliampere. But if you operate the same SMU into the pulse mode then 200 volt is supported up to 1 ampere. So we can get 200 watt from the same SMU in pulse mode. This is very very important aspect when we are going to do a characterization of material or devices. Considering these aspects SMU researchers widely use in various application. For example we talk about thin film. If somebody is going to do the characterization of devices in thin film format for example junction, diode, solar cell you name it. We can connect them to either of the SMU which we have discussed in 2 wire or 4 wire mode. Somebody is working on material evaluation and they want to start with resistivity measurement. We can have resistivity measurement whether it is a collinear 4 probe resistivity 
Van der Poel resistivity, or somebody is going to do the experiment with magnetic field to find out the Hall coefficient. All the measurements can be done using SMU. Each SMU channel support two wire or four wire connections there. If somebody is going to use the SMU along with uh, systems like probe station, environmental chamber, then connections need to be done either using BNC or triax. So most of the SMUs also support triax on the rear panel. We can make directly connection using triax cables available here. As we have seen, SMU is offering various aspects from the low current to the very high current, low voltage to the very high voltage. We have built in voltage source, current source. So SMU is a very, very good candidate for characterizing various materials and devices. To give a few example, uh, many researchers have used them in device and the material characterization for uh, light emitting diodes testings, organic polymer links, uh, OLED display, laser diode module, or uh, all types of the power modules required for the uh, laser diode testing hard diode tests, transistors and all other semiconductor components, medical implantable devices. Here, uh, when we are going to characterize these materials for the electrical characterization, uh, current requirement and voltage requirement is very, very low. And we have already seen that SMU can support femtoampere, picoampere or nanovolt, microvolt. So these kind of characterizations can be done. Solar cell, material to device testings can be done. All the nanomaterials, nanoelectronics, single electron transistor, quantum dot based devices, all these devices can be characterized using SMU for IV characterization. Flexible printable printed electronics, electronic components, and electronic modules like IoT based modules for power analysis. All the IV measurement can be done using SMU. So we have concluded with this small presentation what SMUs are, what are the electrical capabilities of the SMUs, what are the different configuration we can use with same SMU, how to make a connection to the probe station or environmental chamber, what are the critical electrical parameter like power consideration and SDM cycle, and with all this feature, how SMU is going to be useful in various material and device characterization. Hello everyone, I'm Abhay Joshi, application engineer from Keatley Instrument, Bangalore. In this presentation, I'll be talking about Keatley Parametric Analyzer 4200A SCS for material and device characterization. Model 4200A is integrated solution and a right combination of various hardware and software options for various material and device characterization requirement. To fully characterize device, material or process, we need electrical tests like IV measurement, CV measurement and pulse IV measurement. For supporting this, SMUs are there for various types of IV measurement requirement. CV or AC impedance characterization can be done using hardware called as CVU. And for various types of pulse measurement, there is ultra fast pulse sourcing and measurement option available as a hardware in parametric analyzer. All these hardwares like SMU, CVU, pulse IV, they comes with different types of cabling. SMU comes with triaxial cable because we need to measure a very, very low current. CVU comes with SMA or BNC cables and pulse IV measurement instrument comes with HDMI cable. When we have to characterize single device or single material, it is not feasible every time to disconnect one cable and connect other. For that, Kitli provide industry's easiest method to switch between IVCV or IVCV pulse IV. But model 4200 comes with built-in more than 450 user-defined test which can be modified as per our requirement. This is industry's first instrument with built-in measurement videos where YouTube-like videos are available explaining how to configure the instrument for various measurement, what kind of source noises can come there, how to avoid it. So this help any user to get familiar with instrument and setup very, very quickly. Model 4200 is a configurable platform. It is having a built-in industrial PC with Windows 10 and a powerful software called as Clarius. This software is having so many routines to control internal hardware. Also, it's support to control the external hardware like probe station, external temperature controllers, and few other equipments, something like optical sources, magnetic sources. For doing IV measurement, various types of SMUs are available, like medium power SMU or high power SMU. 
In both cases, voltage levels are same. They only differ on their current carrying capabilities and power requirement. Medium power SMU support 100 milliampere with 2 watt power restriction. High power support 1 ampere with 20 watt power restriction. For ultra low current measurement, there is a special attachment called as remote preamplifier that can be con con attached either to the high power SMU or to the low power SMU. With this configuration, we can do IV measurement. Depending on how many devices terminals are there during the testing, we can decide how many SMUs are required. For testing of three terminal device, two SMUs are enough because the instrument will have a separate ground unit for one connection. For doing CV measurement, we can have multi-frequency CV or we can have special CVs like quasi-static or ramp rate CV, ultra low frequency CV measurement for testing of uh, special devices. For pulse measurement, uh, two types of attachments are available. One is pulse sourcing and measurement unit and another is pulse generation unit which only help to generate a different types of pulse pattern. All these three hardware have three different types of cabling. Depending on the application, we can have a switch system which will be helpful either to switch between if configuration is having IVCV or IVCV pulse IV. We also can have a switch system which help user to connect any of this hardware to multiple devices. Those who are working on very low temperature and when they are testing multiple devices at the low temperature, they need these kind of attachment in their operation. The SMU part, which we use it for doing various types of IV measurement in parametric analyzer, we have two offering. First is medium power SMU, which is capable of 200 volt, 100 milliampere on higher side. Lower side provide 100 fm to ampere current resolution and 100 nano volt voltage resolution. High power SMU provide 200 volt and 1 ampere on higher side. Lower side, it offers same resolution. And with attachment of preamplifier, the 100 fm to ampere resolution can go down to 10 ato ampere for measurement resolution and 100 ato ampere for source resolution. In parametric analyzer, all the SMUs have built in 6.5 digit A to D converter. So they are built in default high resolution SMUs. And as the parametric analyzer comes with 9 slot option, depending on the requirement, we can have a number of SMUs starting from 1 going up to 9 to test like for doing the parallel device testing in few of the applications. The Kitli SMU offer a very low current measurement and sourcing option, which we have discussed like 10 ato ampere or ato ampere. With these capabilities, this SMU hardware, like two SMU with two preamplifier, is further modified to fulfill few critical application requirements, something like quasi-static CV measurement or very low frequency CV measurement. With all this feature, Keatley Parametric Analyzer 4200 with its built-in SMU is very useful in material evaluation starting from resistivity measurement, device testing, like transfer characteristics of MOSFET, BJD, any semiconductor compound devices. We can do all the measurement using SMU in IV characterization era. Let's explore what we can do with CV capability of parametric analyzer. Kitli parametric analyzer comes with 4210 or 15 CVU unit for doing capacitance versus voltage measurement or any AC impedance measurements. With this instrument, we can do a capacitance measurement starting from femtofarad going up to nanofarad. The test frequency for the operation is going to be a 1 kilohertz to 10 megahertz. This particular model sometimes is called as LCR meter, sometimes multi-frequency CV meter, sometimes CVU or CV unit. Okay? Internally, this particular instrument is having capability of sourcing plus minus 30 volt in DC. There are certain materials and the devices where test voltage need to be very high. For example, if somebody is working on dielectric materials or somebody is working on uh, materials like gallium nitride, silicon carbide, during the CV measurement of those devices, 30 volt is not sufficient. For that, we can add additional DC bias. The first option is using internal SMUs, which are capable of providing plus minus 200 volt. That means 400 volts differential measurement. All these measurements can be done. When we are talking about additional of D, additional DC bias, so for that, different types of parameter extraction examples are supported in Clarius software. Also, there are extensive sample programs available for doing all kind of CV measurements with different model. 
CB measurement is very difficult as compared to IV measurement. Most of the times we, we end up measuring the noise instead of directly doing the CB measurement. And it's very difficult to find out from where the noise is coming. To help the researcher to find out the exact location of noise and doing the troubleshoot, Keithley Parametric Analyzer 4200 comes with very simplified CV measurement unique tools which will be very useful. For example, real-time capacitors measurement. It is something like having one instrument just making connection and directly getting the display of that. No need to set voltage sweep, frequency sweep. Direct measurements are possible. That's the reason we call them as a real-time capacitors measurement. Another important aspect is called as confidence check. Confidence check can be utilized when instrument it's different cable and devices are connected and we are getting different different capacitors value at different thing. So issue can come from the cable connectors attached to the instrument itself. If you really want to find out where it is really going wrong, we can do the confidence check. This will help us with one report which explain how much is additional capacitance coming in a picture, how much is the additional resistance coming in a picture, what can be the possible source of that and how to overcome. Few troubling, troubleshooting tips are already given there. Another important aspect in Keithley parametric analyzer 4200 CV meter, we have provided one more option. Capacitance is always measured across two terminal devices. One is high, another is low. If we are doing the experiment with probe station where check is involved, check can act as a source for the noises. So standard practices, disconnect the setup, reconnect, don't connect high current measurement channel to the check do it the opposite way, this can take a lot of time. And if the thin film devices are there, lifting the probes and again connecting the probes can create a scratching which can damage the devices also. For that, Kitli provided option in which just using the software, we can connect AC as well as DC biasing points to either of terminal. So this synchronization is available only with the Keithley CV unit, which is going to be a very useful when somebody is doing the debugging and finding out from where the noise is coming into the measurement. If somebody wants to do a measurement using the CV meter with additional DC bias, how to make a connection? For that, Keithley provides differential bias T's. Two types of bias T's are available. One, which support up to 200 volt DC, another up to 3 kV. So internal CV meter with additional bias can be combined using the bias T and then we can connect it to the devices. So this can be used for the high power MOSFET testing. Along with the multi-frequency CV, Kitli also support quasi-static or ramp rate CV. Why this kind of CV measurement is required? All the multi-frequency CV measurements done using the previous example or standalone LCR meters the challenge comes when the device offer resistance more than one giga ohm. Higher the resistance, accuracy degradation happen for the instrument itself. There are the applications like low power CMOS, display technologies, uh, low leakage devices for the semiconducting material. In those cases, normal LCR meter or multi-frequency CV measurement have a lot of challenges. To avoid that, physicists started using quasi-static CV in which voltage is applied with fixed ramp rate, very low current measurement is done and capacitance is calculated. So this is done using the two SMU attached to the two preamplifier. So during this operation, we can have built-in voltage support up to plus minus 200 volt. But here, no frequency component is involved. If somebody wants to do the frequency dependent measurement and extract the parameters, then the quasi-static CV measurement is further modified as very low frequency CV using SMU and here also, we can do the CV measurement for any device or material offering resistance up to e to the power 15 ohm. For this, two SMU plus preamplifiers are used. Frequency of operation is going to be 10 milliards to 10 hertz. So as we know, higher the resistance, it can be compensated by lowering the frequency of the measurement. Here, capacitance can be measured from 1 picofarad to 10 nanofarad. During this measurement, if somebody would like to extract the parameter, by changing the models like series capacitance, shunt capacitance, dissipation factor, leakage, resistance, imaginary resistance and real-time resistance. All this extraction is possible in very low frequency CV for this frequency operation. There are so many research papers and articles published with this in domain of CMOS, MEMS technology, organic electronics, thin film transistors. So low leakage devices, mostly they preferred this technique over the multi-frequency CV techniques because 
it offer a very, very low noise. Using capacitance meter and all this capacitance measurement technology which we discussed, multi-frequency, quasi-static and CV measurement, these are very useful if somebody would like to evaluate how the junction is there. With the powerful software, we can do a lot of parameter extraction. For example, by just doing the one by C measurements, we can find out how concentration is varying across the depth in the junction. We can extract so many parameters for the capacitor or MOSFET, like flat band voltages, contamination, all these measurements can be done. The sensor characterization is one area people are doing it. When researchers are adding different, different dopant into the material and making the junction, if they would like to see that how the dopants are adding change in the Fermi voltage, all these measurements can be done using CV measurement. And it is equally supported with the powerful software of parametric analyzer 4200. The third most important aspect of parametric analyzer is pulse IV measurement. Earlier, when we used to do the IV measurement, voltage is applied throughout the experiment. For example, if it is in the step way, from this point to this point, all the time voltage is there. So does result in current in the material. But when material scientists started working on the devices which are very small in size, like nanofilm, thin film, thick film, we used to talk about. When the nanofilms are coming in a picture or small devices are coming in a picture, if voltage and current is available there for longer time, that can create a problem, something like Joule effect, self-heating of the material. We all know that in a material science, temperature can cause change in the resistance. So IV characterization can change. To avoid this Joule heating, researchers started adopting pulse IV measurement, which is kind of equivalent to the DC IV measurement. Only change is applied voltage is not applied throughout the experiment. It is applied for a fraction of time, followed by longer off time, and then the next voltage pulse will come again for the shorter time. During this cycle, material get enough time to cool down. So local temperature will not increase. We can avoid Joule heating. But it is very important aspect to understand. When we are applying voltage in pulses and doing the current measurement, measuring lower current much faster way is again another challenge. Depending on the material and the devices, the pulse width of this pulse IB can be millisecond, microsecond, nanosecond, in few applications, it can be even picoseconds also. So when we are going to adopt this technique, we have to also consider, is it really possible to do the current measurement with the same accuracy what we are expecting in the experiment? For all these applications, Kitli Parametric Analyzer 4200 is having ultra-fast pulse source and measurement unit, which is 4 to 2 5. This particular unit comes with dual channel, support two voltage ranges, 10 volt and 40 volt. For a 10 volt, it supports 50 megahertz pulse frequency, so we can apply pulses from 10 nanosecond up to second. For 40 volt, we support pulses from 100 nanosecond to one second. And we can generate all types of pulses, including arbitrary waveform generation. When we are sourcing the pulses, we also can do the current measurement with the built-in digitizer emitters available which support current sensitivity of 10 picoampere on the lower side with the noise of 200 picoampere. And on higher side, these units also support 800 milliampere. Here you might have understood the difference. Generally, the pulse generators, they don't support current more than a milliampere. But when we have to do the fast IV measurement on the material and devices, for example, if somebody wants to do the pulse IV characterization of MOSFET, drain current requirement can be hundreds of milliampere. It is not possible to use any pulse generator there. But using this instrument, which is supporting 800 milliampere current, this is a very, very useful tool in regular measurement. We can add 12 channel into the one box of parametric analyzer for doing the measurement. There are upcoming technologies like MEMS technologies or memory technologies where the memories of 2 by 2, 4 by 4, 8 by 8 are coming in a picture. And if we have to characterize, we need very accurate pulse sourcing having built-in current measurement requirement. So these kind of requirements can be easily fulfilled with parametric analyzer having 4 to 2, 5 PMU in configuration. With this feature, this particular instrument is useful in various test application. Before directly touching about the application, I would like to cover three aspects of pulse IV requirement in our day-to-day -day life. First is pulse IV, which we discussed in a previous slide. In this case, we apply pulse for shorter duration during on time, measurement is done, and we do the parametric extraction. But 
there are certain applications in which we need to do the measurement not only on the on time, but it may need to do at off time, rise time, fall time. For that, we can configure the instrument in transient IV mode, where from the pulse IV, instrument will change as a waveform capture mode like oscilloscope, where current and voltages will be measured on off time, rise time, on time, fall time, everywhere. Here measurement is done using fixed sampling time. So that's the reason it's called as time-based current and voltage measurement. Another aspect is called as arbitrary waveform generation or multi-level sourcing, like two-level amplitude we need to apply with the different, different rise time. There are the applications where this kind of stressing is required in memory testings, reliability testings, failure analysis testings, uh, device lifetime testing. In those cases, we need to apply non-standard waveform. So this kind of segmentation or arbitrary waveform generation need to be done with the sourcing and this is equally supported by voltage and current measurement with the digitizer. With these features, this particular instrument is very, very useful in advanced application. I'm going to cover few of them. Simple example, memory testing. In memory testing, we need to apply a different, different pulses to set some pattern, to erase the pattern. After set, whether really set happen or not, we need to do the measurement. After erasing, we again need to do the measurement and we need to put it in the multi-cycle mode just to check that how many number of cycle memory can be tested. Memories can be anything, flash, PRAM, ferroelectric memories, FERAM, resistive memories, uh, phase change memories, all the memories measurement, they need uh, this kind of capabilities of different type of segmentation supported equally with measurement capabilities. Vapor level reliability and the device level reliability is another very, very important aspect uh, in material testing. When we develop the material, convert it to the devices, and when we do the normal stand transfer characteristics, we need to find out how many times the device can withstand number of operation. Those tests and also the effect of some other parameters can be extracted by doing vapor level reliability testing. All these testing can be done with the support of this PMU which we discussed. PMU can be utilized for doing the AC stressing. We can also extract the parameter by doing the transfer characteristics or we can also utilize SMU for doing more accurate transfer characteristics. Uh, we do have a special software called as Ultrafast BTI which support user to configure the instrument with built-in SMU and PMU for all kind of voltage stressing and doing the measurements. Nanotechnological devices, earlier it used to be just like small devices like nano rod, nanotubes, but now so many novel devices and the sensors are coming based on these devices like single electron transistor, quantum nanotube transistor, uh, quantum dot devices. When these devices need to be tested for IV characterization, default way it is done using the pulse IV characterization in which the short duration pulses need to be applied and current that is given by these devices is of the order of nano ampere. Here you can see we are talking about 700 nano ampere on the higher side. This current can be measured with PMU because PMU support current sensitivity of pico ampere. So all these measurements can be done. Uh, very recently we came across certain uh, novel applications where biosensors based on the FATs where a bio layer were used in between to detect the bio viruses like Ebola and all these measurements. They also did using a uh, 4200 with PMU where the structures were exactly same like this nanotechnological FATs, only their one layer was biological layer which was reacting with the uh, viruses. So these measurements are very much possible with the available setup here. We can do a charge trapping. Uh, where there are so many uh, new materials are coming in a picture for different types of FATs and if somebody wants to do the charge trapping or detrapping mechanism, this can be done by simply applying one pulse to the gate and doing the measurement. During rise time, we can find out how the traps charges are there and during the falling edge of this, we can find out how the detrap is there. Even though it's looked like very simple, just applying the pulses, a lot of mathematical models need to be adopted there. The skeetly powerful software do support this kind of mathematical model which help user to directly get extracted data about charge trapped and detraps during this operation. Phase change memory, here you can see we are applying very different types of pattern to reset the memories. Then measurement is done to cross check whether reset is done. Then set need to be applied again different pattern and again measurement need to be done. All these things can be done using one PMU connected to the three terminal devices because it's dual channel and having separate ground also there. 
So with this different different features, electrical parameters and the software support, model 4200 is well proven in characterizing various devices, material and also during the process evaluation. This can be utilized for semiconductor device and process development. Uh, different types of semiconductor devices testings like BJD, MOSFET, uh, compound semiconductors, nanotechnological and MEMS devices, solar cell, non-volatile memory testings, organic electronic testings, reliability and lifetime testings, and even failure analysis. So with this feature, uh, in this short presentation, I have covered what are the key capabilities of Kitli model 4200 in characterizing the devices, material using various hardware options like SMU, CV unit, and ultra fast pulse sourcing and measurement unit. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good, good day to everybody. I am Raghunath Rao from Tektronix, uh, a field application engineer working along with Abhay. And I, today I am going to make a short presentation of a software that runs most of the uh, hardware that are used for material characterization and process developments. Uh, which is a super uh, software that runs over the hardware. This is called the automated characterization suit. Okay, this is what we will be talking about. So, what is ACS standard software? It is basically a suit that over runs the over the uh, all the hardware that are have been discussed with Abhay from Abhay on the SMU standalone which were there plus the 4200 characterization system and the other peripheral instruments that are required in a total. Uh, material characterization system including probe stations and switch matrices to control different test points on the system. So this is basically a over, and, uh, over and above that. Where, does, where is it being used? Uh, used by engineers for performing uh, a wide range of tests for characterization of semiconductor devices. It basically value adds by making the setups and configurations of the tests very easy and it runs it runs most of the things based on Python scripts or TSP scripts, which are basically uh, running the whole measurement routines and control of the hardware. Most of them are also written in Python. Codes are C codes, which are basically used. And for the graphical user, uh, user interfaces, we use XML as a code. ACS has a broad range of applications, right from testing individual components, packaged discrete components, or it is used for device characterization, parametric uh, tests, uh, for just like we do the family of curves for each component, and then again used for doing reliability tests, and also die sort or wafer sort applications, uh, which are basically found in the process and monitoring applications. They allow, uh, the ACS software allows configuring multi-site parallel testing for both parametric, die sort, and wafer level applications. Configurable, uh, most are also are used for configuring and testing by um, microelectronic devices. So the basic products are supported here are from standalone uh, stand bench instruments right up to stacked and racked instruments to a complete probe process system, what we call them as system 500 which we sell regularly. So this uh, support start from the two, two single channel instruments like 2636 or 2635. Then you can have multiples of them stacked, connect, interconnected using the TSP link, uh, which are supported on the 2600 series. Or it can also work with a 4200 based on uh, certain of the applications. Basically, this ACS software becomes very critical, especially when there is a lot of data handling and report generations that are required, which are more uh, important for the users. So that's where it comes into picture, but then it can do all the applications. And just like we, did, we do for the 4200, the user interface is more or less the same. Only thing is they use a different environment. Again, they, they are basically have built-in measurement routines for even testing gallium nitride types of devices or HM, HM test uh, IV characterization. A typical user screen, it can be seen here. 
testing at the device or a wafer or a cassette level is the portfolio, main, main strength of this uh, software. And flexibility on configuring the software and application customization is another imp uh, important feature. And these are all interactive, automated uh, operations, powerful uh, co combinations of GUI and script tools for testing module developments increases the speed with which a person, uh, a user can be coming out with the test results and increases the throughput. Again, the ACS software with the integrated hardware uh, can be used at different levels from uh, development stage to uh, integration stage or to the production stage. So each of these have their own uh, advantages. Basically, in the development stage, you will use a standalone instruments with the ACS software to do discrete level uh, material or component testing. Whereas when you get into, we will also use a different software for low cost considerations, maybe an ACS basic, which is a subset of ACS. Then they can be used in uh, integration stages where we can stack and rack multiple channels of SMUs, uh, boxes of SMUs to, for high reliability tests, and we can do uh, Tests, reality tests complying to JDS, JEDEC, JEDC, BEC standard tests. So this is a integration uh, phase where this can be used. Then in the production process, basically the systems are, look very similar to in a rack with more safety and operations done, where operators don't operate anything, and they allow uh, us to do measurements at wafer level or a cassette level in automatic probe stations which can be used for wafer sorting or dye uh, sorting applications. And they will allow, allow us to generate data files or reports at the end of the tests. Uh, there are a lot of, the ACS comes with a built-in libraries for different types of instruments, instru external instrumentations other than the SMUs or the 4200s. Uh, and we hear basically the probe station or a prober becomes very critical. So we support with different manufacturers, or drivers for different manufacturers, so that everything can be controlled from the same system. Uh, this is one example in the screenshot what you will see in ACS basic, where a wafer is uh, aligned. You choose the orientation for the uh, wafer, and then you can also do a scanning the wafers when they are in the cassette levels. So this is an example of a sequencing through the, uh, on the wafer with the different um, uh, uh, sub subsites being chosen. And you can identify or you can nominate which will be the pass test, which will be the fail test with different color codes. And also you can also program in what fashion the prober has to make contacts with the specific devices from left to right, uh, maybe zigzag, left, right to left. All possibilities are possible using this user setup screen. And that's how the orientation looks for on the wafer. And these are seen in the uh, GUIs of your own uh, ACS environment. Different phases. So you can see the, act, the controls that are available when we are defining the wafer mapping. Okay? And then how the orientation is there. Where is the notch? Is it a flat? Is it a square? Is it a uh, circular uh, types of wafer? And in the test setup, we have a top to down tree structure where you define this wafer level, then you choose the subsite level, then the device level, and then the test levels can be programmed and then you can walk through one test after the other in a sequence mode. That's also available. And for each of these device levels uh, tests, we have the libraries built into it, test routines already built into it. The user only needs to change the conditions for the test. Then you have the prober control whether the prober moves left to right, all those back to front, or all those can be done for automatically loading the wafers from the cassette to the stage. This is an example screen where we see a device level setup that are required. This screen, you can see that there's a bitmap of the device structure. Then you have all the tests that are being done. And in this window, you get the facility to assign the SMUs for each device on pin, and then when the test is running, 
it basically shows the current log messages, whether the test is passed, whether the test has failed, or is the test stopped because of excess of current flowing into the device, or because of limitations that have been, uh, current limits that have been exceeded. This is an example of another uh, device. This is, that was, uh, I know the BJT. Now this is like a MOSFET. Same, same uh, bitmaps are there available for different things. So that's a library of devices that for which we have these tests and as well as the bitmaps. Then this is an example where we have shown uh, the report generation. It, this, this screen basically shows, uh, we can set up the reports to show which devices have failed, which cassette level has faced, or it's at a particular lot. So this is where we, they, it's called, used for WAT type of uh, measurement. The ACS standard basically uses, these are the key features that I talked about, developed in Python, provides more compatibility with new libraries, better user experience with optimized GUIs, very similar to what we find on 4200, but the difference what I understand from ACS to 4200 Clarius software is it just doesn't have these levels of prober controls for automatic probers for wafer, cassette level uh, or wafer level um, applications. So basically uh, Clarius software and 4200 is good for where we want to test single, level, single wafer and then manually load the other wafers. So this will increase the throughput because it's an automatic loading. It's possible. Then we have the uh, XML libraries which are give us a better scope and then it's up, now the, there is a support for additional new instrumentation. So you have in the lab a uh, scope, you can, once the new software is there uh, in terms of upgradations, you can always get the controls to add these uh, instruments into your racks. So your system, ACS system per se, is what you have seen in your lab here. Most of them are here. And these are how they are connected. And uh, we can use most of these with one software that runs the whole system. So my understanding is in this lab, though we have not officially sold an S500-like system, so what we find here in this screenshot, in this slide, is the lab setup, what is this ISC lab is having, this lab is having. More of the instruments are uh, there here, which are controlling, uh, which are there, uh, are the uh, switch matrix is there, probe station is there. All I think is we don't have is a wafer sorter here. <laughs> probe station, <laughs> otherwise we have most of it. And we are able to do most of these lab things. You, I think this lab is having both ACS standard version as well as the ACS basic version. So different people can use at different